just set this up. Light here is lighting it, so it's going to kill off the background. And there you have it, focus stacking in Luminar Neo. Let's find out more. Hello and welcome to my Luminar Neo focus stacking review. This is the beta version, so um, let's get into it and see what it's all about. The first thing we're going to need is a few photographs to edit. This is where the flower comes in. Have a light here. I'm going to light the flower, take a few shots. I have the Z7 Mark II with a 105mm macro lens here. So what we're going to do is line it up. I'm going to talk you through it really, really quickly. If you're not interested in that, skip forward to the rest of the review and I'll show you how you stack the images. I've just quickly just set this up. Light here is lighting it, so it's going to kill off the background. So what we're going to do is... I'm going to start recording here now and you can see I'm shooting this at f5.6 so you can see how little depth of field there is at f5.6 so if we want the whole flower in focus we're going to have to take quite a few photographs so I'm shooting this now at f16 so just to give you a direct comparison you can see the depth of field has been greatly increased but the image firstly won't be sharp enough now why won't it be sharp enough it won't be sharp enough because of a thing called diffraction but that's beside the point. You can Google that. There's no need for me to explain that to you. So what we're going to do here now is we're going to take a load of photographs of this flower, pop it into Luminar Neo, and we'll see then how they all stack together. About here, just going to get the start, the front tips of the flower, just start to get them in focus, and I'm going to shoot back along. So that's going to be my first shot. I'm just going to speed up the process for you here now, rather than watching me take every single photograph. But here it goes. Now here are all our images here now in Luminar Neo. You can see focus is stacking over here on the right. Now you might well ask, how do you get focus stacking? How do you install it? So just quickly go up here to the jigsaw piece and it's going to show you then what's coming soon, what's available now. Focus stacking is here. If you pre-ordered and if it's available to you, you can click on install here and it'll install for you. So um, now let's have a look at our photographs. Now the one thing you will notice here now is that um, I didn't nail my focus completely here. I kind of missed that as well. So that's the first shot. Second shot, that's good enough. Third shot, yeah. Fourth shot, yeah, that looks okay. F oh, wait. Um, I missed these fellas. So that's the shot before. So out of focus, getting closer. Missed, I went past it. I went past, I've missed these fellas. Okay, uh, my bad. Again, I was doing so many different things there. I was holding a light, I was focusing from the wrong side, looking at the screen from the wrong angle, and adjusting focus in the opposite direction to the way I normally do, so... The odds of me getting this completely right in the first go were kind of slim in the first place. So let's continue going back in along. That all looks good enoughish there now. I don't think there's anything else mi missed. Um, rolling back down along. No, I don't see anything. Yeah, we're going all the way towards the back here now. And that's practically towards the back. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stick to 13 photographs. So what we're going to do here now again is if I go back to the catalogue, um, so the last shot is the one we don't want. So what I'm going to do is go up and select my first shot. And if I hold down shift and click on the last one, they're all selected now. And I can simply just drag and drop them into focus stacking. All the photographs can come up here now. And I'm going to click on stack. And you see this little wheel spinning around the place. Now, the few things I have to say to you here is we are actually uh, doing, I don't know, it's definitely, yeah. It's 13, 13 high resolution files. As you can see above here, they are 8,256 by 5504 pixels, which is 47 megabytes each. There's 13 photographs at 47 megabytes each. So this is going to take a bit of time. And also, this is actually in the beta version. So how well that's going to work there now again, I honestly don't know. So we're still waiting for Tierno's moment. You can see the wheel is still spinning. As I say, this is the beta version. This is not the speed optimized version. But we should be nearly there now fairly soon. Um... Just wait for it. Here we go, here we go, here we go, here we go. That's it, that's it. There we have it, there we have it, folks. So this is our finished image, and ah, oh, yeah. As I saw from the start, I've missed this section. But otherwise, that looks really good. Again, this is just the beta version, but that looks that looks really good. So if I just want to go in and I'll click on edit here now, pop the colors a small little bit. Um, saturation a tiny little bit and vibrancy I think would be nice that would really actually I might bring down the saturation and just leave the vibrancy up a small bit so yeah I like the look of that my, my natural instinct is to add a bit of glow to this which seems a bit nuts because we're just after trying to get as sharp an image as possible and here I am thinking about adding a bit of glow to it but uh, what we do is go on sharpen here now and we'll see and look at that detail wow that is 
That is really, really good. Now, again, as I say, this is just the beta version. And I did miss, miss focus here. That was that was clearly evident from the shots, even before I brought it into the software. The one thing you have to remember with all this too as well is, it's not just stacking the focus, but you also have breathing too as well in the lens. When you're zooming in and zooming out, so let's go back to our catalog here now again. So if I go, um, it was on this one here now. So if you're really, if you're really looking at that now, we look at this photograph and we look at the last one. Watch how much the flower changes in size. So the first one, see it zoomed in quite a bit more and then it zoomed out. So it's, it's actually focus breathing. So as you, as you rotate the focus ring, it's also affecting the zoom ratio slightly too as well. So that's the other thing. It's not just stacking the image one on top of the other. It's actually automatically aligning the images too as well. Go on the gear icon. So there's auto alignment. The reference image is 5213. So which one is 5213? If I just click off that there now, 5213 is this one. And that is our four, that's our seventh image and it's halfway through. So it's exactly the midpoint is what they've selected. So the middle point image, but I can just go in and change that too as well if I want. So there's chromatic, chromatic aberration reduction there too as well. So you can click on that if you want. But um, you can also just pop down along here and check to see which image or select which specific image you would like to have as your reference image. But um, we'll stick with the 5213, which is the middle image there now as such. And um, yeah, that's that's just, that works That works a lot better than I thought it was going to do. So I'm really impressed with that. Well done, Luminar Neo. That, that, is, that is incredibly handy. What I'm going to do now, just for pure and utter pig iron, is I'm going to go back. I'm not going to record it. I'm just going to literally take several photographs, focus stacking, and do it properly this time. So this is the finished photograph. It's actually 30 photographs combined in Luminar Neo focus stacking and I think it worked out really well. It just goes to show this software is absolutely amazing. That that really works and it really works incredibly well. So I think that worked a lot better than most of us are expecting. Um, genuinely didn't expect it to turn out that well and um, macro photography isn't something I normally do but I do shoot a lot of product photography so if you're shooting something like a ring now or something like that is really problematic because it's so small and you want to shoot it quite large so you're shooting with a macro lens. So it's going to amplify the ring, it's going to show it in a larger scale, but because of that scale and because of that amplification your depth of field is narrower and smaller. So and it's a very simple way of explaining it. But um, this is where you'll be taking multiple shots of that ring or a watch or something, a smaller item, fire off the shots, focus stack them all together and boom, there you have your image that's dead sharp and just looks absolutely awesome. So, um, I hope this video was helpful to you and um, see you out there.